Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar, together with my co-host, Mark Warren, at Statewide News Service, JamesTechFilly.com. And as you can see here, weekly columnist for the Jewish press. And I'm having a lot of fun doing all of that. And uh, I write about how government relates to the Jewish community, or it doesn't, as the case may be. And one we, with us today is someone who's the tops in Albany County government, uh, mm -hmm. county executive, Dan McCoy. Thank you again, Rabbi, for having me on your show. I well, appreciate it. Mark, as always, it's yeah. always a pleasure to sit down with you two. You were my county legislator before you were county executive, so... Yeah, uh, you've known me a long time. Very long time. <laughs> and, and you haven't aged a day. Yeah, I feel it. <laughs> you feel it well, you know, I was surprised because one day when they were doing a changing of the guard at Division of Military and Naval Affairs, uh, all of a sudden I walked to the back and you were there. I was like in, uni in your... Uh, what yeah, you my fatigues. fatigues. My military... Yeah, my, yeah, yeah, my uh, military uniform. Yeah. Why, what are Macy. you in the military? I'm still in the military. Still there? Yeah, 20 some years later. Really? Yeah. It I, doesn't interfere with your Albany County you know, it, it, well, it schedule. Was, scheduling sometimes tough and people understand if I have to disappear for the weekend or my two weeks AT, they know I'm serving AT. my country. Uh, annual training. Okay. We have to do one, one weekend a month, two weeks a year, but um, unfortunately, since 9/11, it's it's turned into a little bit more than that. You know, really? we, we get called. Well, we have details down in New York City. We we have people stationed uh, at the airports, at the tunnels. Uh, we have different missions across the state of New York, and we, we actually we for a while uh, New York Guard had a lot of high tempo of military service, men and women going over to Iraq and Afghanistan, and we still do. We still got troops going out all the time, and I don't think people really realize we've been at war for 14 years. And it's not stopping, it's not slowing down, and uh, it still affects, it only affects 1% of the population, though there's only 330 million in this great world of ours in the United States, but uh, it does, we do have 1% of people Do you have any personal serving. feeling about the war? I mean, because maybe in a way you have friends going there and... When I'm out of the service, Rabbi, there. I'll talk to you about yeah. that. <laughs> when you're in uniform, you, you serve you, at the you pleasure. You say, yes, sir, yeah, that's, that's it. all. Or yes, ma'am, and that's yeah. it, and I move on. You see, he's up to date. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> behind the time zone. But I wanted to, you know, ask you if you feel, what would happen if we just stopped? You said we're, in, we're at war for 14 years. What if we just stopped meddling in Afghanistan and Iraq and, you know? You know, it's, it's, would, it's, it's, would, it's, would it's, the world it's, go to hell in a handbasket? You know, it's a million dollar question. A lot of the good that we've done would probably unravel very quickly. A lot of these countries stay unstable. They're they're not used to democracy, unfortunately. You know they're used to you know having a um, you know a dictator, and you know it's going to be tough. It takes time. People just don't wake up and say, well, we can vote for who we want, we can elect who we want, and I, honestly, it affects the the friendships that we have over there, like Israel. It really affects our partners that have been great partners of this this country of ours for a long time. That we have to make sure that not just our interest is taken care of, but their interest is uh, taken care of. Hmm. Uh, so you don't really advocate for just you know stopping retreating. No one wants to let them no do one, their thing, and that's we it. could. We the, pro the, the problem is that uh, you know, look what happened with 9/11. We left our guard down. You know, we kind of sat back and we said, "What happens over there is not going to affect us." And well, it is affecting us. And, and nothing happened with Vietnam. When we no, did. that was a different type of uh, that was a different type of war. These people are t they're terrorists. They're not they're not real. You know, it's not a real military. They they, they do things for the shock value. They no, do but, things to. The other part is with the uh, with Vietnam. I mean, we. You know, there were terrorists. I mean, they were hiding out in the bushes. They were, oh yeah, you know, they weren't coming they weren't, to our soil. You know, yes. and we yeah. didn't sign a, a, we didn't sign anything saying that you know we failed at our mission. We just left. Uh, no, no, you are so, correct, but it's uh, so, and, and, it's getting and to that now point. We got McDonald's over in, in Saigon. And we do, we do. <laughs> So it's, we took over the place now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. economically. Yeah. Yeah. So. Ronald McDonald took over yeah. for us. Yeah. So I'm just saying, you know, maybe uh, we just let them live. And Listen, Danny yeah. has enough troubles with Albany County. Yes. <laughs> You're asking well, you him how to conquer the world. You brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a national so, guard. So who's yeah. the head of the Division of Military and Naval uh, General Murphy left, and we have a new general that took over, a two-star from the uh, Air National Guard. And his name is? And it's escaping me right okay. now. You put his me last in name it. is German. German, Ger yeah, German, correct. General and German. so I'm saying that yeah, you sure. have a German in charge of the New York mili militia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's <laughs> actually really... Well with the no, community. no, our new tag's a really great gentleman. <laughs> he's leading by example. And, uh, you know, it's, it's General Murphy was there over six years, I believe. Okay. And uh, the new general, uh, German's going to, you know, there's some great de deputy tags and uh, generals that are there that 
transform the National Guard and can continue to do great things. So we have uh, a larger military in this state than most countries. Um, National we, Guard and Reserve, we probably got a little over 17,000 soldiers. No, not so, just that, but in terms of our equipment also. We have a lot. Oh, in this country. Yeah, in this our country, state. Oh, in this state. In we, this state, we well, have you a got, lot of. We do. We got Fort Drum. Fort Drum's here. Fort Hamilton. West Point. You know, so we have a lot of places that have a lot of armor. But our, our, uh, what New York State owns, I mean, aren't those federal? Well, or if you're Trump National Guard, it's, 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 yeah, yes, that's federal. What so, the, well, I'm talking about what New York State owns. We do. We the, have a lot of equipment. The we, tanks, the... We don't have tanks anymore. We got the, out of the tank business. We got out of the tank business, but, yeah. the, you know, I mean, in terms of the amount of... Heavy equipment, no Humvees, equipment. transportation. Yes. I mean, we have a, we got the arsenal right here. We have a lot of people stationed at the Water Fleet Arsenal. Yeah. We do have a lot of and equipment. Don't, and, and whether, you know, with the Navy and the, you know what I learned about this was when, in, in uh, when we, yeah, was it 1986, uh, when we celebrated uh, the July 4th, uh, we had a, Reagan had his ship on one side and we had our ship, New York State ship on the other side yeah. of the Statue of Liberty. And, uh, you know, we were right toe to toe with what the U.S. government had in mm -hmm. their. Not uh, quite, we're not quite presence. as there, but we do, you know, we have you know, aviation throughout the yeah, state. The aviation. We have a lot of aviation with, the Air, with Stewart Air Force Base. We have, a, you know, that's the Air National Guard Base. Um, you, know, you got Stewart Air Force Base, which is, you know. Uh, and our naval national. militia is very big. Correct. Too. So, yeah. I mean, people don't realize it. And that's what we I'm saying. We have a lot of, know, yeah, we do have a lot of. They don't think of us as being a military state. <laughs> we, we do have a lot of military. Yeah, we do. Okay, so. Can you get you, back to Albany you, County? Are though, you bringing me any of that to Albany County? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Okay, so tell me, what, uh, what, what's, what's your, what's your state of the county address about? You know, state of our county address, you know, this, this theme going forward is about, uh, you know, really reinventing the way we do things. And we're looking at how we're taking a top to bottom approach. We have a relationship with you, Albany, that they're kind of come in and look at how we deliver services. It's our equity, equity agenda that we're going to be doing. Equity agenda. Yeah, our equity agenda. Yeah. I'm saying, yeah. So what they're going to do is come in and look at how we do social services, DSS or uh, children, youth, and family, which takes up a good portion of our tax dollars. And what it's going to do is basically look at how we deliver services, see if we're delivering them effectively. But if there's something in the community that's working better than what we're doing, we're going to go. We're going to partner in with that that venture. We're going to say, okay, you have it right. We're not. This is what's working in your community, and we're going to get behind it. All right. Now you uh, do this uh, thing uh, every year where you sleep outside in the winter. I do. And, and to. Uh, you know, take one night to see what the homeless uh, have to uh, endure every evening. Correct. Uh, why not go on social services for a month and endure what other people have to endure? You know, I've seen, how can I say it? I've seen other people do this. And uh, are you fairly living that way? Because you know what? You, as, as, as a kid growing up, we had assistance in my family, um, yeah. so you know I, I know what it's like. You know we've lost we've lost our home when we were growing up. You know we got foreclosed on. I went through that. Um, different things. You know uh, you know I've seen, I had friends on welfare. I've seen people get food stamps. You know um, I, I've been through it. You know I, I grew up in the south end of Albany, and you know I appreciate what people have to go through. And we have to understand. I always said everybody as bad as you think your day is, think of someone else. You know think of the people you're servicing that might need more assistance. Than than you or somebody that has to take them a lot longer to get ready in the day because they have a disability that hinders them from trying to get ready as quick as you do so you know I have put myself in that side I, I highlight the homeless veterans and that's what we've been highlighting because being a veteran myself you know I want people to know that you know we do have a huge homeless population here in the capital district and a matter of fact there's like 75,000 homeless veterans in this great country of ours that are outside every day and you know we want to bring attention to people especially on the coldest nights of the winter say look people are living out in this you know um, and the same thing with the services to get to the question is that uh, you know I could do that but I go to events all the time I'm out all the time um, it's a little bit harder to try to do that, but I, you know, look, if you want to take that challenge with me, I'll live, I'll live like that for 30 days. Okay, I'll take it. How's you. that? Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the, uh, uh, the homeless, uh, the, out by the Ann Lee home. Oh, uh, Soldier On. Veterans. Yes, yeah. Soldier On Project. We're so, a little bit closer. Um, just a little? I, well, listen, it goes to the legislature this month. They're going to vote on the lease agreement. 
once they sign that, we should have a shovel in the ground, hopefully no later than October. It's a $30 million project. We're doing it with the Shaker, Shaker site. The Shaker site has been there since the beginning of time, and it really, their mission, really, during the Civil War, they took care of soldiers. So I go, now we can still go back to taking care of each other. They have a lot of property that's in disarray, so the soldier on, you know, uh, has agreed to help with them to fix some of their buildings. But it's going to be the first campus uh, of this type in New York State because not only is it going to be housing for veterans, it's going to be where they can go and get therapy, it's where they can get classes, uh, we're going to try to offer college classes, really just hope, to, to hope mm -hmm. at the end of the day to get them off the streets, um, get them in living in an environment mm -hmm. and take pride because they're going to own this apartment at the end of the day and when they decide to move out it has to be sold back to Soldier On to give to another veteran. It can't sure. just be sold to anybody. Uh, but it's really, you know, they'll go out during the day, they'll get homeless veterans off the street, they'll bring them up there, they'll try to give them therapy. If they want to sit there and drink, they're going to let them drink. Um, but it's kind of like a peer, not a peer pressure thing, but to see what their peers are doing and how they're getting help and hopefully it connects with them. And, and it, it how, really many people, works. how many people can you? There's work? roughly going to be about 150 apartments, and uh, you know, but that's just for the veterans out there. But the day process, you know, they're going to go down like the shelters here in the city of Albany. Seven o'clock, they have to be outside. So if it's cold out, they have to get outside. So they need a place to go to get warm. So we're going to try to get them up there and really get them off the streets and get them the services Is that CDTA they need. Is CDTA going to offer direct bus service? We're, we're taking care of that with transportation. Soldier On has a couple of vans. They will go out into the community to help them get them to the doctor's appointments. They'll help them get them, you know, move them around. So it's really one of them all one in service that they're going to be able to go from A to B to C to D and get everything that they need. So you're going so. How many vans? I mean, because if you have 150 people, well, you gotta, you yeah, five vans, not, right? there's going to be a lot of services right there, so they're not going to be. No, oh, but you got to get them up from the. Oh yeah, from the from mission. Pearl we can't. We mission. can't. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll take trips, you know, and uh, not, we can't force them to go there, Mark. They have to agree that they want to go up there for the day, yeah. and you know, so we're hoping, you know, with a hot lunch or you know, or dinner or breakfast that they'll come up and you know, and they'll they'll get a little. Is this treatment. one of the first things in the country because I never heard of anything. They like they this. do it in Pittsfield. I saw the model in Pittsfield. I went over there. They worked with the VA. VA. This is the only organization. Organization that got approval from the VA hospital to build on their property, which if you know the federal government and the VA is nearly impossible. Um, they got a great model. It's working. And you, we want to take that model here in Albany County. And, you know, look, we get calls all the time. We had a veteran that uh, I think it was a year ago or two um, was going to school in Schenectady Community College, a Marine, came off active duty, living on the streets. He was living out of his truck going to school. Mm -hmm. So we got him into an apartment. They're, the veterans are entitled. The veterans are entitled to a lot of benefits that they're not aware of. Like we did a uh, veterans identifier at our uh, social services that identifies veterans, gets some different assistance. We actually got a national award for it because it's the first of its kind and not just the state of New York, but the nation, that we're identifying veterans and we're getting them the services that they need and getting them quicker. And, and most importantly, it's not using our tax dollars, it's using the federal tax dollars because it's a different system. So, uh, and what is the budget for the county these days? Six hundred and ten million dollars. Okay, if you yeah, going up or are you it, 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 no, it, it goes well. You know, we have stabilized it. You got to remember when I took over four years ago, we were in a recession. Um, our reserves was basically $19 million. We were borrowing $15 million a year to make payroll. Well, we were kicking the can down the road and we had to change the way we okay, did. Okay, so what's it now? What's in your reserves now? We have roughly over $40 million in our reserves as of today. Double. Right. And then we're, we're basically, for the last three years, we've been under the cap. Back to back zeros, under the cap the first year, two zeros back to back. Um, staying under the cap next year, you know, we have to, people don't want their taxes raised, but we still have an obligation because we deliver a lot yeah, of services and people don't realize the services that we deliver. And it's all on your website, Albany County. Yes, no. yes. No, we do, we do <laughs> on our website. I wanted to mention, ask you about the, um, the, the priorities uh, that you, you know, because you said we have to do things differently. So what are your priorities as well, you head into, what, your sixth year or something? Yeah, and this is my fifth year. I just yeah. got reelected. Okay. Our equity agenda and then the opiate crisis that we have in this county. Uh, as you know, back in uh, February when I did my state of the county, I did Naloxone, which is a standing order for anyone in the first county to do it, upstate New York. The governor followed me the next day oh. after I did it. Um, but basically, anyone can go into a pharmacist and get, get the, the, you know, this device that will take someone in overdose, a loved one, and reverse it. Um, this Narcan? Yes, it's Narcan. It's Naloxone, but they do call it it's Narcan. It's Narcan. You can go in there. You don't need a, a, a you know, prescription. You can just go in there and say, hey, I want this. 
they'll cover it, boom, you walk out of there and uh, hopefully you don't have a loved one. But unfortunately, we have more and more kids in this, this era that are using heroin's back for some reason. It's cheaper, it's stronger than it ever was before. If you look at, I say to your viewers out there, open up the obituaries. Parents aren't saying my kid passed away because of drugs. Uh, you know, they're just saying they passed away. There's too many young adults, there's too many older people. It doesn't discriminate, it doesn't care if you're rich, poor, black, white, it does not matter. Correct, and here's somebody, in his beliefs, you weren't supposed to take this stuff, and there he was. You know, it, it's sad, and we really need to promote that, but the other thing uh, we've been really pushing is the uh, justice, the, uh, in, the injustice, and the indigent defense uh, okay. for the poor. You know, we have a district attorney's office that's heavily staffed, and we have a public defender, an alternate public defender's office, that don't have the same resources. And if you're poor, you go into the courtroom, and, and actually, I'll, I'll use this scenario. Joe Bruno goes to court. Mm -hmm. He spends $2.3 million defending himself. Mm -hmm. Now he gets it overturned, he gets his money back from the state, he wins his case. Now, I don't know about you two gentlemen, but I don't have $2.3 million. So if we have to defend ourselves and get top attorneys, it's not going to happen. So our outcome, the three of us, would probably have a different outcome than Joe Bruno. Where we'd be sitting in jail wondering what happened, you know, if you don't have the resources. And that's what happens with our justice system. There's justice for the rich, and then there's injustice for the poor. So one of the things a year ago when I saw the, uh, the kid, um, Kayleaf, and it really moved me from New York City, that uh, killed himself because he, I, I don't know the whole case, he stole like a backpack, ended up in jail down there for three years. He didn't have the money for bail. He fell through the system. He gets out three years later. He was like 16 years old and commits suicide. They had him, you know, bad experience in the jail system. And I said, we can't have that. We have to change it. So I had a press conference last year. I invited uh, all of our assembly members and our senators and uh, Assemblywoman Pat Fahey, and uh, you know, I love her. She took our bill, we wrote it. Phil Calderon, my deputy county executive, Chris Quinn wrote this bill um, with the help of uh, Judge Rosen, because I brought him on to look at this whole equity agenda and what we're doing also with you know, the injustice. They wrote the bill, Pat introduced it, it passed the assembly last week. Uh, unanimous, it passed the assembly. Um, and we're hoping this week it's gonna pass the Senate and we'll get reimbursed and more money into the public and alternate public defender's office where we can fairly represent poor clients that can't afford to defend themselves in the courtroom. Well, it's great that finally got them to do something up on the Hill. Well, I gotta tell you, I was surprised because I made the announcement last week, I brought Terry Kinlan in yes. to help with our uh, public defender's office with our younger public defender to you know to give him some experience and guidance and he's really good at that and then I and I, I was a little you know sitting there going well I hope this passes I hope this passes because you got to remember the state of New York takes care of five counties and I said what about the other 57 because basically they sued the state it took eight years to settle they only settled with five out of the 62 and I go what about the rest of us mm -hmm. so this bill wasn't just about Albany County this was about the rest of the state of New York right. that you know that for whatever reason state government left out you know this is right and what was wrong um, from that lawsuit, but also, more importantly, it's protecting the people. And it's, mm -hmm. in, you know, it's gonna protect the poor people that walk into this court system and are gonna have, hopefully, a different outcome. Okay, this is excellent. So you have a few things that are really on the cutting edge of... Uh... We do, we've, uh, we've really been uh, involved with doing a lot of different things. We're revamping our project growth where we take youthful defenders and uh, basically, instead of going to jail, we, we've gotten them jobs to pay back restitution. So, you know, we look at the crime, the judge picks, them, picks these kids out. It's the first, first of its kind in New York State. And basically what happens is they say, well, we put them to work and they have to give you a paycheck every week. It comes out of their dollars and they start to appreciate money. Uh, we're relaunching a new program. I'm doing it with Sheriff Apple. Uh, probably in the next two weeks you'll hear about it and it's gonna be on cutting edge because that's what we need what to do. It? Well, if I told you, then yeah. they would know. I can't tell you. He wants a scoop. Um, <laughs> you know, but it is going to be between us. Okay? It's going. It's going to be working with the trades and uh, with the trades? all the unions, oh. like you know, the operating <laughs> engineers, okay. the painters, the right. carpenters, the teamsters. Well, we'll get yeah. into that. We'll get you know, into that. Uh, just put the work? indigent to work? No, no, no. This is totally different. This oh. is going into a different direction, but it's going to be cutting edge. This is okay. the Jewish view, so of course, you know, rabbinical things, but this is really, I always pound on this because one of my million jobs there is just visiting Jewish prisoners. What can you do? Yeah. I mean, there are Jews in prison, unfortunately. And I always say that exactly this, what the Torah Judaism says, that what if you steal? 
So it's not like lock them up in a gorilla right. cage, you know, for two, three years where, number one, they're unproductive. Number two, they don't learn anything. And number three, it's costing the state or the right. county a lot of money. It says restitution. You work it off. And this is what these people need. These people don't know what a job is a lot of times. They don't know what it right. means to drop out of school. You're going to get up. You're going to go to work. And then, you know, even me, let's say I mow my lawn. Right. So you just know the simple thing. Hey, you feel good. You look at the lawn after you're done. You right. feel good about yourself. So these kids, they don't know what sometimes we even... I talk to them. What are you doing? Drug well, selling? You don't uh, mow your lawn? You're right. <laughs> Can I have you come to my house? Yeah. 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 So you, no, I charge you, too much. You don't, you don't have, the, the toughest thing is that to house a prisoner is roughly about $185 a day. To house a juvenile detention is upwards of $350 really? a day. Why is that? It's just the expense of doing business. And if you look mm -hmm. at, remember when the state of New York closed all of its mental, mental institutions across the state? And they said, look what we've done. They pushed it down to the counties. We put a $17 million addition on our jail. We have doctors seven days a week around the clock dealing with you know, inmates that shouldn't be in jail. They have mental illnesses. And that's why part of what I did with my state of the county is we're doing a mental health court. Um, I'm actually going to be making an announcement with Patrick Kennedy, which is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, we're going to be doing some things in the mental health side of it because they really shouldn't be in jail. And we just got to get them the help. Just like we just we launched a program through our uh, mental health department that goes out with police departments and helps them to identify the mental health community and how to deal with them. So it's a better outcome at the end of the day. These are things we need to address. These are things we need to look at. And sometimes are you in it's, favor of raise the age. Race age, you know, I, I really haven't looked at it that much, and I, I do agree with it. Um, you know, we don't want to send kids off to prison. You know, they make a mistake. You have to take it case by case. There's some of them, trust me, that deserve to be in there, that you're not going to change. But sometimes you take a youthful defender like that, and you wreck their life forever. Like, Rabbi, like you were just saying, they come out of jail. Then they can't find a job. No one wants to hire them. No one wants to give them an opportunity. That's the other thing. We've changed probation. We have a 14-week program with the, uh, our probation department mm -hmm. that teaches these ladies and gentlemen how to do interviews, how to search for jobs, how to dress. Um, we prep them for all that, and we find out by running them through this program. We let them off probation early, and guess what? They don't come back. You know, they don't come back. The, the rate of, of them coming back is, like, slim. And that's what we're trying to do because what we have been doing for the last 30 years doesn't work. Well, it doesn't I, work. Unfortunately, I've had... Friend, good things, ha bad things happen to good people, but I've had friends who've gone through the county jail system, and they say that people, the people in the jails are planning their next crime because yeah. they like three hots in a cot, it's a regiment. Or they can, oh, yeah, maybe it's, it's free a food. dead end, you know, but it's but a it's dead a end. They don't right. have any way of thinking how their right. life's going to get right. better. But they need a the regiment to do. keep themselves on track and when you're out in society and you got to make your own schedule and you got to have your own regimen that's what they're saying but you can yeah. train people right. that's what you're saying you train well, them not dogs. Why? People, no, no, no. Why? You, that's what kids you, are. You, no, do, you train them. You get up on time. Team, Some are adults teams. but you, Rabbi you're right you, you have to give them light at the end of the tunnel. You know, it, you have, and what we did with Soldier On, actually Sheriff Apple opened it up and he's really run with the program. We identify veterans at the jail when they get admitted. And what we do is they can go to a wing just with veterans. And Soldier, uh, Soldier On comes in every day and mentors these prisoners. They mentor them on how to better themselves. They mentor them on how to look for jobs. They, they go through a whole thing. So when they, by the time they come out of jail, most of them have apartments waiting for them. Mm -hmm. um, they got, they're dressed, right. you know, and they're dressed for success. And they're seen a different way. And that's one of the things that you have to do. I, you know... Uh, Training them to look at life differently, to mm -hmm. look at different opportunities and not feel like, hey, you know what, we've hired a lot of different felons in the county and a lot of them that are very talented, have degrees, whatever reason, fell, you know, they fell, they fell, whatever. People fall down, you don't kick them when they're down, you lift them up and you, you pray for them and you hope that they do better with their life and we have to give them that opportunity. But if that opportunity is not there for them, they're right. never, it's, it's just going to be, you know what, that so, person's going to end back up yeah. in jail, we're going to be spending more money for, you know, to keep them in jail or her in jail, and it really doesn't have a great outcome mm -hmm. at the end of the day. I wanted to ask you about the county clerk's office, because they always, uh, I've always been told that they actually run a surplus and they give money back to the county budget. They, the I want to say Bruce Hidley does a great job. Bruce Hidley is our uh, county and, clerk. Yeah, he does and a great. His predecessor. Yeah, Tom uh, Klingen. Yeah. Tom Klingen does another great. He did a great job. Bruce has really changed a lot of things. Um, 
people have to pay to get records online, you know, like if they FOIL something. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it's, it's a surplus. It's money that goes there, comes back, but you gotta remember the tax dollars that are going in to run that place. Not saying, not so saying. it might say that they generated $5,000, but it, how much money did it cost the county to have that equipment in no, place? No, I'm not talking, I'm talking, you know, Bruce was on the show and Tom was on the show and yeah. they talked about what, the five million or $10 million dollars numbers, that they lot, give back yeah. to the county every yeah. year. And that's wonderful. That's that's laudable. It's the only yeah. agency that really gives you back a, anything. It gives back to the county coffers. So did they give anything back? They give they, they give back some money every year. But again, no, but I it? have to look at, at the overbill that it costs to run that department. So yes, they generate money. You, you got to remember, they well, generate they, money off. You sell your house. There's a sales tax yeah. committed to that. You register a car. There's a sales tax. Well, he's to talking that. about above and beyond what it costs to run the office. No, no, I'm just, that's what I'm saying. That's this is where the revenue. The five to 10 that's what I'm trying to say. Where the revenue comes in, it yeah. comes in off the real estate market. Right, sure. It comes off the sale of cars, okay. clothing. You know, uh, it comes off of people registering a vehicle. So that's how they generate that money. Okay. It's not them. Gen well, it's a tax that was created to generate money, but it goes through the clerk's office. So how office. much money did they give back to? The I'd have to look at the budget okay. off the top of my head. I'm not 100 percent sure, but okay. I don't know if it was five million. But I'm not, you know, Bruce. Did it put a this. smile on your face when you saw this? Listen, anytime I can keep taxes at zero, I'm a happy man. Okay. And what do you do for uh, relaxation and for, you know, because you do need, like you're talking about mental health, yeah. you do need a mental Goes health. Goes into the Army over here. Yes, I go away in the Army on my weekends and uh, get away from this, and I, it's a different type of pressure. Um, I try to spend as much time as I can with the family. You know, I was up for re-election last year, so I spent a lot of time out campaigning. Um, but I'm pretty active, and, the, you know, my job is, I work for 310,000 people. This is my fifth year mm -hmm. of going out into the community. I do state of the counties. I go right. to every municipality. I go to neighborhood association meetings because mm -hmm. I want to be engaged with the people because I right. said at the end of the day, I work for you. Right. And what do you want out of county government? It's not what I want. It's what you want. And how can we better service the people, you know, the great residents or my constituents of this county? How can we do a better job without mm -hmm. hearing back from you? And again, a lot of people don't realize, you know, from mental health to health, to uh, you know, different departments, early intervention, transportation for special needs, we do it all. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize it. And I oversee the sheriff's budget, the district attorney's budget, which mm -hmm. can be unpopular at That's times right. yeah. because I gotta hold them accountable because I gotta put my name on to whether we raise taxes or lower it. And, um, but, so it's but, challenging. But don't you give the DA's office and the sheriff's office a lump sum and let them manage it the way they... They, they, put their, they submit their budget every year to us and then we decide whether or not that, that's where it's going to yeah, go. Yeah, because they're separately elected officials. Correct, but so I'm responsible for the levy. I'm responsible for the taxes. So I have to, I'm the one that negotiates all their union contracts. So it's, it's a little difficult at times because they are independently elected. Yeah. Um, but the way it's set up through the state of New York, uh, you know, I have the pleasure to have to deal with their budgets every year and saying yes or no to them, which can be unpopular at times. But I have to hold them accountable. So when we go to the taxpayers of this county, that basically, you know, look, I go, my name's on it. The legislature ratifies the contract. They ratify the budget. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't realize the legislature is doing it. They see my name on the budget. How much of the budget it gets changed from when you propose it to when they dispose of it in the legislature? Um, it depends on how they feel that year. Yeah, but approximately, uh, probably, I mean, because in the state budget, it tweaks maybe 2%. Uh, yeah, you know? it, I would say it depends on whether they like me that year. But do they it, get, it could be 10% of the budget. It depends on what they want to do. Yeah. Sometimes they throw us off, or levy you off, because they do some things that don't add up. Um, but we make it work. Okay, well... Um, so it's challenging. You have a, a lot of new people in the county legislature. A, we do. We got a good group of people that came in that are a uh, different way of thinking, have a fresh approach to things, um, and looking at things differently. And that's what we need to do, Mark. We, you know, I said, look, when I took over as county executive four years ago, I said the way I found government's not the way I'm going to leave it. We have to change the way we do business. I get criticized all the time saying I want to treat county government as a corporation, strive to make a profit. Knowing that the profit doesn't go to a shareholder, it goes to the taxpayers. Because the more frugal I am with the way we run programs and deliver services, I can give the relief to the well, taxpayers all in the county. Clark is looking uh, in your direction. You know, he is. Singing, he, he's Bruce does a great. Song, you know? he, Bruce, uh, Bruce, I can tell you, has been a great partner. So is David Soros and Sheriff Apple and um, you know and Mike Connors. You know, we, we all got to work together at the end of the day. Um, we have we agree to disagree on, on multiple occasions, but for the most part, we all have the same thing. We have to deliver services, but we have to make sure we do it right. I just want to ask you this uh, gently, but do you get involved politically with the county legislature races? 
So you, I was you, running you, last you, year, so I was a little busy. <laughs> but, if you, but still, I mean. I back different legislators. Um, the you, ones. If you don't like an incumbent, do you bet, find someone to run against them? No, no. If, if someone's running against them and I decide who I like, I don't like, um, it depends. If they're agreeing to what I'm trying to do in the county to turn it around, of course I'm going to support them. You know, um, it's, it's changing the cohesiveness of the legislature. You know, I was there for 12 years. I was the chair the last two. Um, it changed a lot, you know, when I was in there. We, we you know, it's a different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first got on board, we didn't get an agenda to meetings. We didn't, we weren't told what we were voting on. We showed up at a meeting and then you just, you know, you followed like sheep. Um, it's changing. You know, they're actually, you get some that are, not all of them, but majority of them are sitting there and they're actually reading the, the, the stuff in front of them. They're making logical decisions. Um, there are the people I want in there. You know, just, I don't need someone with me 100% of the time. I just need people that are truly there paying attention and, and taking their job seriously. There's some people in there who don't even have email addresses. Correct. I mean, it's just terrible yeah. how behind yeah. the times a lot of them are. And a lot of them are in leadership. Yeah. And, you know, it's just... You just can't get rid of them. They've it's, been there a long time. It's, it's, you know, look, I've never really been in, um, in favor of uh, term limits, but I, I, I said in 2012 in January, I said downsize the legislature and give us term limits because I was at my end in, mm -hmm. in, in January 2012 because it's hard to change things. Again, when you're used to going a certain way for 332 years, and, you know, <laughs> this legislature is the most powerful legislature in upstate New York, and they're the biggest in the state of New York. They're actually the second big, biggest in the nation besides a uh, government in Texas, but they only meet three months out of the year. Um, well, everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, but it's challenging at times because you have to sway 39 people mm -hmm. what you're trying to do and they still when the Democratic machine mm -hmm. had a lot of power here in the county mm -hmm. the legislature got a lot of power and they don't want to give up that power base that they have um, and it's tough you know because I knew you know look at I was chair of the Democratic Party right. I was chair of the legislature mm -hmm. I had more power, people who are power hungry you know, if I was power hungry I would have stayed where I was at because I had a lot of power as county executive I don't I just know how to use the office correctly and I know how to get out there and change things and that's the bottom mm -hmm. line make yeah, changes for the we're people. We're out of time but it's every good every good time it's good every year to yes. check in with you stay to the state of the county so that we want to check in with you mm -hmm. but really what you're doing is really i give you a, an a plus grade if you want to hear from one of the from Del people you. from delmar <laughs> well, part of albany Thank county you. yeah i, I had a question great. for you two yeah, before we right. got off the air though what what do you think about the governor coming out forward for the ban on it on it companies not dealing with israel i think state? that's great i you know it's beautiful that he you know that israel's the best friend of the united states and so many jewish people in new york and really that um it's the best thing for, um, I mean, New York's a leader in the world, you know, surely in the United States. I agree. I agree. No, world. I was happy to see it. Yeah. I personally was happy to see um, that we're, we're going to boycott companies that are boycotting Israel. Excellent. All right. Uh, we'll have to call you back again next yes. year to see what's happening. But in the meantime, continue with your great success and Thank do it with good health. Yes.